What is going on guys? Grave here today. I'd like to talk about some of the stuff that Bungie has been talking about over the last couple of weeks. Some changes coming to the game once Season 16 and the Witch Queen is released here at the end of February. Um, now, of course, all this information will be linked down in the description if you want to read over all of this in its entirety. Some of you may have already heard about some of this. Let's go ahead and start uh, kind of talking about some of the things we can expect to kind of change. Some things I think players are liking, some maybe not. But first of all, they talked about starting with Season 16. Players will no longer be no, uh, limited to the number of artifact mods they can unlock. As of right now, you all know we only can unlock 12 artifact mods. And if you want to unlock anything else, you have to reroll your artifact, which does get expensive on each character if you do it multiple times. Starting with Season 16, you can unlock all 25 artifact mods by the end of the season. It says the same amount of XP required to unlock 1 through 12. You know, that's not going to change. But after you unlock that 12th artifact, so 13 to 25 is going to take more XP. So if you're a person that plays the game a lot, you grind a lot, you will feasibly have the option to unlock all 25 artifact mod slots. Now, if you're a player that does not play a lot and you still want to, you know, change something out on your artifact itself, you will have that option to, you know, re-roll that artifact and start over again. I think that price needs to be knocked down. I kind of wish they would get rid of the price in general, but I guess this is their kind of way of doing that. You know, if you're playing a lot, you'll be able to unlock everything in that mod or all the artifact mods in that artifact. And that way you can kind of just change out your mods at any time, kind of on the fly once you have everything unlocked. So it's still going to be kind of a strategy of unlocking the first 12 things you want and then unlocking everything after that that you think you might want to use in the future. When it comes to our uh, artifact mods themselves, I said bringing back a few perennial favorite anti-champion mods. They talked about in season 16, anti-barrier will be scouts and bows. And for overload champions, that can be done with uh, SMGs and auto rifles in season 16. That's only the only two champions we know about so far. And I like the idea of, you know, having the champions there it makes it a little bit more difficult content. But at the same time, I hate all players having to be tied to maybe one particular weapon. I think if you're going to have the champions in, you know, each season, at least have like they did this time, two weapons per, you know, class it is a, always a good idea. And then kind of change up the meta, you know, each season. And I think that's what they're trying to do is change it up so there's going to be different weapons used. So if you're like myself, if you just got back into playing recently, you're probably going to have to go out like I, I'm going to and farm some good scout rifles for the scout rifles and bows for the anti-barrier. I think I'm pretty set on the auto rifles and the SMGs so far for the overload. I'm kind of interested to see what else is going to kind of come out of this when we get some more information about what else we're going to be able to stun champions with uh, going into Season 16. They said they also want to take a little bit of pressure off your vault space. They said with the Witch Queen, you can change the energy type of a fully masterworked piece of armor at a much reduced cost. A fully masterworked piece of legendary armor can now be changed to another energy type for 10,000 glimmer in one upgrade module. While, while a fully masterwork piece of exotic armor can be changed for 20,000 glimmer in one upgrade module. So you will have to have the masterwork before you're able to get this price reduction, but that will be a good thing going forward. Uh, if, once again, if you're like myself, you just got back into playing over the last several months, I've been saving a, one piece of everything. So I've kind of been saving one piece of every flavor, as I would say. So in case I need a stasis chest, head, you know, legs, boots, whatever the case may be, uh, arms, gloves, uh, that way, if I need to run a different build, I need a different body piece for a different mod, I have that in my bank. But sometimes, you know, that just kind of gets your vault clogged up with tons of gear. And to have the option to change a fully masterwork piece for a cheaper price is going to be a good thing going forward, in my opinion. Also, they talked about making orbs of power with weapon elements of the new weapon crafting system will encourage you to use many different weapons and ask you to burn hard earned master work materials on a weapon that you may only be using for a few hours just to generate orbs. That seemed like a tall order. This combined with our desire to act on consistent feedback that players want to be able to generate orbs of power with exotic weapons that do not have catalysts has led them to implement a kind of a new system with the Witch Queen and beyond. It says orb generation on weapon multi-kills will no longer be a function of weapons masterwork status, but instead be provided by a suit of armor mods, which can be unlocked automatically for all players and which will plug into the helmet armor mod socket. Each such mod will apply the orb generation effect to all weapons that you have equipped of a particular damage type. So a single mod will cover multiple weapons in your arsenal if they are a shared damage type. This applies to a weapon that changes damage types like the hard light or a kinetic weapon with osmosis. It says they will they will continue to create cool, exciting, 
exotic catalyst over the next several seasons but in the meantime you'll still be able to generate orbs with weapons uh, or you know certain exotic weapons that do not have a catalyst just yet and last but not least they kind of talked about the 30th anniversary content and how a lot of people you know are enjoying it whether you be a paid customer or a free-to-play customer you know you can still participate in some of the 30th anniversary stuff even if you have the free-to-play version of the game they talked about a lot of players wondering if this was going to go away if this was going to be vaulted when the witch queen comes out and they said that is not the case you will be able to continue your adventures uh, with the Zer led adventures through 2022 and they're going to have another update later this year in 2022 about what they plan on doing with the 30th anniversary content in general so it looks like all of that 30th anniversary content with Zer and going in and playing kind of the game show uh, idea is going to be there for a while now personally i hope they change it up some i think that would be something that would be really unique to keep in the game but at the same time i think it needs to be probably adjusted a little bit exactly how it works because players are eventually going to get kind of bored of playing those same you know levels over and over if they continue to adjust it i think that would be great or i think eventually if they just kind of leave it alone they will probably vault it in the future maybe sometime at the end of this year anyway guys leave me a comment with your thoughts let me know what you think about all these changes coming to destiny 2 within the witch queen update of course if you like the video hit the like if you have not subscribed yet please do so be sure to check out everything down in the description the community discord my twitter and of course the affiliates here on the channel empire jerky and amazon associates also check out the merch store that is linked in the description as well and i'll catch you all next time peace